before we dive into perception and into a few specific perceptual systems, what I want to do is give you an introduction to perception. Now, perception is not the same thing as sensation. Sensation happens with all sorts of uh, information that you, know, you are never conscious of. So a perception is something that you actually perceive, you consciously perceive. I perceive that this is my hand. I perceive that I'm wearing a blue shirt. Those are perceptions. I do not perceive that my oxygen, the oxygen content in my blood is roughly 20% or whatever it is. So that, that the, um, the, there are a number of sensory events that never reach consciousness. Those are not perception. And those are important, but they're not important from a perceptual point of view. So in this section of the, of the course, what we're going to deal with is it, it, we're going to focus uh, on sensory systems that give rise to perception. Okay, so let's understand the, 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 in, the difference between stimulus and perception. So a stimulus is a change in some property. And I've listed a few of the um, major types of changes that we can have. We can have a change in, in the photons. Uh, we can have change in, in air pressure. We can have change in mechanical pressure on the body. Uh, we can have a change in the chemical environment. And each of these stimuli produces, can produce a perception. So in the case of photons, it can produce vision. In the case of air pressure, it can produce uh, sound. In the case of pressure, mechanical deformation, it could, protect, it could produce touch, pressure, or pain. Chemical environment, pain, ta taste, smell. So what do I mean by pain from a chemical environment? I mean when, you when uh, the tissue is injured and all sorts of chemicals are released because there's inflammation, there's damage to the tissue, that is a chemical environment that elicits a, can elicit a perception of pain. So these three uh, types of, of perceptions are called the chemical senses. Now this is, a, is a, a, a very broad strokes. Within vision, there are lots of different changes that we can perceive. We can perceive a change in luminance or a change in form or a change in color or change in movement, either the speed or the direction of movement. So these are all types of modalities of perception that we derive from this common uh, stimulus input. Okay, now I, I harp on the fact that the perception here is a possible perception because the fact is that we cannot, we cannot predict the perception that will occur from a stimulus. We simply cannot. Um, and that is because we're very poor perceivers. We, we are poor at reporting the pixels in the world or report, reporting the actual um, sound events in the world. We are not cameras and we are not tape recorders. If we go over to the uh, slides for a moment, this was a, uh, a controversy, the dress, what color is the dress controversy that swept through the United States uh, a year or two ago. And, uh, and, and the answer is, which should be available to you right now with the information that you already know, is that this dress has no color. The dress is a stimulus. Stimuli, stimuli don't have perceptions that are wedded to them. The, the perception is, is your experience of this stimulus. And your perception of this dress is going to depend on many things. It's going to depend on what's surrounding it. So depending on, on what you do with the, with the surround uh, of this um, dress, you can see it as more blue or more gold, uh, as more white or more blue, and so on. So the, the, the point is that the stimulus does not predict the perception. The amplitude of the sound is, just to give you another few examples, amplitude of sound is related to loudness. And in general, these two will go up together. Just as, as the frequency of a sound goes up, the pitch, the perceived pitch will tend to go up. But it's not the only thing that is going to dictate 
what you hear. Um, the wavelength of light influences the, the color that you perceive. It is not the only uh, influence upon that perception. And tissue damage can influence uh, whether you feel pain or not. So let's just convince ourselves at how bad we are at perceiving in, in a certain way. And, and we'll come back to this. Okay. So um, here are, uh, here's a, a, a diagram. Um, this is actually the Ebbinghaus illusion. And so the question that, that I want you to answer is, is this green dot or this, is the left green dot or the right green dot larger? And I'm pretty sure that you're going to perceive this as larger. Uh, and then I'm going to show you, as I'm sure you already figured out, that they're the same size. Okay? But the cool thing about this illusion and many other illusions uh, of the same ilk is that even after you know this, and I made it, so I know that they're the same size, even so, I cannot see them as the same size. So this is not, this is an automatic reaction that you cannot unlearn. You cannot overcome it with some learning uh, paradigm. So what this tells you is that, is that there is, obviously perception has worked for us through evolutionary time. Here we are to, to say that it's been good enough to get us to survive. But it is not the equivalent of either a camera or a tape recorder or a gas chroma, chroma, chromatograph um, and so on. So we are not accurately perceiving what's out there in the world. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, uh, the general course of sensory pathways.